so I would like to begin this uh, very short presentation, first of all, with a small uh, acknowledgement. I would like to thank uh, my colleagues, my Africanist colleagues here um, at LUCL for supporting uh, me for the feedback that I received during the application procedure. And I, have, I owe a special thank to Martin Mouse, uh, because when I came up with this idea a few years ago, I wasn't serious at all. I actually presented it to you as a sci-fi uh, <laughs> idea of developing a project on a cattle talk, um, but then you actually you took it mm, seriously and you pushed me to write a project, and the project has been funded, so here I am now, thanks to uh, Martin as well. And then I would like to begin with a very s s small um, disclaimer. Uh, despite all the pictures of cows that you will see in this presentation, uh, this research project is not about cows, as somebody said a few days ago, uh, but is about um, the way pastoralists talk and think about cows. Um, the anthropological and uh, ethnographic literature um, has dealt in detail, in depth, um, uh, the topic of um, um, cattle as a cultural theme uh, in bovine cultures in East Africa and the languages of East African pastoralists are known for having rich vocabularies and li rich uh, linguistic expressions to refer to the appearance, the variety of appearance of animals' uh, pelts. The anthropological literature also reports often on uh, this uh, taboo in bovine cultures of um, uh, counting the members of a herd, um, cattle orders usually um, identify uh, each single uh, uh, cow um, of a herd among hundreds of, of, of heads. And they're able to do this because they can individuate the, the, the individual characteristics of each animal. For example, the appearance uh, uh, of the uh, coats. Despite this rich uh, anthropological literature, um, we still don't fully understand the, the semantics, the meanings of the uh, linguistic expressions and the terms that are tested in these languages. So uh, this study basically um, aims at understanding the, the meaning and the full referential range um, of these terms. Um, and it's substantially a, a study about the semantics of appearance in bovine cultures. I prefer to talk about appearance rather than colors and patterns uh, for reasons that will become clear um, later on. So um, the underlying research questions of my projects are these ones. I'm interested in understanding how appearance is categorized in the languages of East African pastoralists, what concepts, what categories exist, and how are these expressed uh, in uh, language. These questions are um, important because they deal with uh, more uh, the, 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 the wider debate uh, concerning the relationship between language, thought, um, and culture. Um, so this is uh, 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 an NWO-funded uh, project, so it will run for three years, starting from November 2019. And in three years, I won't have the time to look at all the, uh, the languages spoken by uh, <laughs> pastoralists in East Africa. So I've chosen uh, a sample of three unrelated languages um, uh, that, share, uh, are, that are spoken by prototypical pastoralist societies. These are Hama, Oromo, and Maasai. Um, I've chosen these languages because there are good grammatical descriptions, good vocabularies, and also there's a solid ethnographic literature surrounding the, the uh, cattle as, as a cultural theme. Uh, the aim of the project is that of building um, a, a cattle talk corpus. So when I talk about cattle talk, I'm referring to um, uh, the genres that pastoralists uh, use when they have to talk about their cattle. For example, um, negotiations uh, uh, about uh, livestock exchange in local markets or uh, proverbs, uh, rhymes and songs that pastoralists uh, um, uh, compose for their animals. 
So I intend to combine uh, traditional ethnographic methods with uh, structured uh, elicitation tasks. Um, and in the uh, remaining time, I actually want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the um, elicitation uh, aided by visual stimuli. So um, I usually um, use traditional, um, the traditional Mansell color chips to individuate the, the, the hues and the colors. Uh, but I've also borrowed um, some of the methodology used by uh, the, the Japanese cognitive uh, anthropology uh, school. So I've prepared my own uh, pattern chips and I use these to understand um, the, the referential range of those terms where we can actually separate colors from pattern. I've also adapted um, the um, body coloring task, which is a, a task developed by uh, Majid and Fastaden. Um, originally, the, the, the body coloring task was meant to understand the um, extensional meaning of body parts. I've changed this into a cow coloring task. So I ask the speakers to color in the, the, an empty profile of a cow to better understand the conceptualization of these terms. So I want to give you just a quick idea of how I do this. I've collected obviously hundreds of pictures of local breeds of cows and I use these pictures in, task, in um, picture recognition tasks. So I ask speakers um, how do you refer, how do you call this particular cow and of course I do this on a, um, a wide range of speakers to check the, the, the productivity and the reliability of the system. So for example for these two pictures um, I get the answer in Hamar. Uh, Shota. Um, then the next step is that of uh, asking the speakers to color in um, uh, the, the cow and I get this, this type of uh, responses. Um, as you can see, this is very interesting. I always use this example because the speakers independently decide to color in the areas on the body of the cow which are actually white on the coat. And this is interesting because for other coats, other pelts, um, they color in the areas that are actually colored on the cows. So I am not yet fully sure uh, about the meaning of this, but it has to do with the, um, with what is, um, with what is uh, important for the speaker to uh, uh, recognize a particular uh, um, code. So I think it has to do with the, um, the saliency or the distribution of, of uh, colors and patterns on the body of the animal. Um, I also ask um, speakers to identify these pictures, so I basically check that the drawings are also recognized across the, the community of speakers to make sure that uh, uh, there is a, 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 a productive system. Um, then, uh, well, I recently discovered by overhearing some conversations that these terms that are normally uh, used for cows and goats and sheep are also applied productively to refer to the colors and the patterns of uh, 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 textiles and modern clothes. So the term shota is also used for stripes. And this somehow gives us um, a better picture of the, 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 the meaning of this term, because we can um, imagine that this particular pattern is conceptualized as stripes in the sense as an alternation of colors and lighter and darker uh, areas. However, not all stripes are referred to as shota. So when I, I test other type of stripes, um, I get a negative answer. Uh, these types of uh, stripes here are referred um, to with a, a word zargi that is used for uh, polka dots, so for uh, poam. So clearly, from this example, we understand that um, the meaning of some of these terms um, can't be 
simply categorized uh, as uh, color-like properties or pattern-like properties, but there is a little bit of both in the sense that um, this term is, um, um, the meaning of this term has something to do with the visual contrast that is created by uh, the alternation of certain types of colors and also certain types of shapes because clearly the meaning has to do also with the thickness uh, and the, the, the spread of the uh, white. There are many other terms that are uh, totally unclear, terms that show clearly that, that sometimes color-like properties and pattern-like properties are conflated together in one term. So um, this is why I prefer to talk about appearance rather than colors and patterns. So these sort of uh, uh, questions, uh, I think, can be addressed with an anthropological linguistic approach. And this is why I will combine uh, this type of uh, um, um, elicitation and tests with uh, participant observation and naturalistic data. And I hope uh, I will be able to provide interesting results in the coming three years. Thank you.